Today's teardown is on a 2011 to 2014 Ford Mustang 5 liter Coyote V8. I know a lot of you have been asking me to do a teardown on one of these engines and I finally got my hands on one. And it's, it, it's weird because it feels like when I go to look for something, I can't find it, but when I'm not looking, they exist. I can remember several of these in the past. I just thought, nah, that's not my market. But maybe now it is. Maybe it's time I start parting five liters out. We'll see. I, I really don't know much about these engines. I don't have a lot of experience uh, working on them. So if I say something dumb or stupid, you can call me such. It's not gonna hurt my feelings. I know this is out of a Mustang because it has a gray intake manifold. And I think the F-150 has a black manifold, but it's the same basic manifold. Also the fact that it says Mustang on the tag kind of clues me in on what it's from. I don't know anything else about it. I know it's had a catastrophic failure, but I don't know miles. I don't know the story behind it. I know it's been sitting for a few years like you see it. So uh, let's get started. Let's get this apart and see what parts we can salvage from this thing. First things first, let's get the coils and plugs out of it. See if we can find any signs of what might lie inside. The plugs don't look too bad, but this tip is smashed down a little bit. It looks like we have a something regapped it for us. So I bet you we're going to find some issues with that cylinder. Next, we're going to pull the intake manifold and take a peek down the intake ports and see if we can see any damage. I glued down. Oh boy, there's some metal pieces in the valley. Well, this is not looking good. We just found a piece of connecting rod and what looks like maybe a piston, part of a piston in the valley. So I, I think someone's been in here and pulled the intake off and maybe they just threw some parts on the engine and they ended up down here like this nut is not supposed to be here. Let's look down the intake ports and see what we can see. Well, there's a lot of oil in here because of the way this engine was sitting when it came in. This is the passenger bank. Let's look at the driver's side here. Yeah, that's not supposed to be in there. What is that? Come here piece of tape that's the cylinder with the smashed spark plug the rest of them look about as you would expect just some debris from the engine being around like I said I think this engine sat for a couple years next we're gonna peel the valve covers off Maybe it's that dipstick. I think it's that dipstick. Yeah, that came out. So I don't see anything wrong yet. This is where I'm focusing my attention on just because of the uh, smash tip on the spark plug. The rest of this looks all right. It's no no major damage to the, like what we saw on the 464 cam. 
Let's go to the other side. stuck on here. It took quite a bit of force to get these off. I do see a little bit of damage here. Uh, there's a couple grooves that are not very thick. It might be able to be polished out on the cam lobes. Just a couple of them. But uh, out, there's no nothing catastrophic, but maybe that's a sign of what we're going to find. I'd like to see what the uh, what the journals look like once we get the cam caps out. Real quickly, I'm going to buzz these exhaust manifolds off. They will be in the way later. Yep. So, right off. Now we're likely going to make a big mess and get the water pump out of the way so that we can get the timing cover off. My favorite tool. I didn't say it this time. This water pump is very, the seal is very tight. Very, very tight. In fact, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get this out. Oh. Please, please be dry. Please be dry. That wasn't too bad. Time to get the crank pulley off. Oh, that wasn't too too tight. Looks like I need a jaw puller though. Oh, that's not a good sign. That's part of an oil ring. Let's get this timing cover off. The chains look pretty decent. All the guides are complete. There's no missing sections. I haven't really heard of too many timing issues related to these engines, so I didn't really suspect I'd find anything. But I did notice it's got a Fram oil filter on it. I don't know if that has anything to do with why this engine's here, but it certainly could. Let's go, uh, let's, let's take these chains off, all the guides off, and then we'll start working on getting the cams out. Next, we're going to go ahead and pull the VVT cam gears off so we can get the uh, uh, secondary chains off and we can get the cams out. Let's see if we can get these cam gears off. I'm not quite sure how these come off. Oh, they're pretty easy. There's one bank. There's the other bank. A friend of mine who is familiar with these engines told me uh, it's best to loosen the cam caps in a in like a, a pattern so that you don't create an uneven force on the cam. He said it is possible to break a cam if you pull these out in the wrong way or maybe that's in the reassembly I'm not sure but I'm going to heed whatever warning he gave me because I really don't want to break cam so we're just going to kind of take it easy and crack them loose in a way that makes sense 
from the outside in. Okay, now we're going to loosen them up a little at a time. Again, I really don't want to break ham. I know one moved already. Okay, I think they're all loose. Let's see if there's any scoring. Ooh, that's kind of rough. Let's put these on my cart in a way that makes sense. Oh man, it is not good. Let's pull the cams out. So with the cams out, you can see some definite scoring in the cam journals. And that's a really bad looking oil right there. It's got some metal in it. This is not looking good. It definitely, it kind of looks like an oil starvation issue to me thus far. There's actually some, it's hard to see, there's got some metal flakes. There we go. There's some metal flakes I just wiped off of this cam journal. That's a yikes. It's probably bearing material. I think that it's definitely an oiling issue here. Here's the exhaust cam. You can see there's more metal flakes I just wiped away. And the main cam journals all have some scoring on them. I think with the cheap cost of these cams, these are going to end up being trash. I hate to throw stuff away, but I mean, I think you can buy these cams for a hundred bucks a piece or something like that. And I'm sure I'll get corrected if I'm wrong, but I didn't think they were that expensive. So that is not good. And same thing as the other bank. We're going to start on the outside and work our way towards the inside. Okay, let's start pulling camp caps. Oh, same deal. Let's pull the cams out. Check out the groove in that. That is super thick. That's a large piece of debris that probably got stuck, got pumped through the oiling system. There, the rest of these aren't too bad, although there's more chunks of metal I can feel, and you can see down here in the cylinder head, that gray material, that's metal. That's all. Yeah, we're in for a bad time. <laughs> this is, check out these cams. Look at more, look at more of that bearing material on those journals, it's awful. Yeah, I think these are gonna be trash. Time to pull the cylinder head. Let's go ahead and get these head bolts out. Okay, time to pull the head. Here's uh, the front of the engine. We're on our way back. Everything looks fine until you get to here. That is, that is pretty blown up. That piston's cocked sideways in the bore. There's a, um, Oh, I don't know where that's from. I don't know. That doesn't look like intake. But it has a part number on it. So, we'll figure that out. That is very wedged in there sideways. Something else I noticed is part of the webbing is blown out on the side of the block. So, yeah, this thing... And what, She went out with a bang. Here's the bottom of the cylinder head. And here's the cylinder that blew up. See part of the combustion chamber, this, the edge of it's damaged. And I can tell you that these two valves are bent because I can see daylight through them and there's no cams in them. So yeah, these heads are trash.
I mean, I suppose it could be fixed, but I don't think anybody's gonna go through the effort to fix them. Let's go ahead and get this head off. Okay, let's pull this cylinder head. I just can't, I can't not not do this every time. Somehow I have to spill coolant on myself. The passenger cylinder head looks a little bit better than the driver's, but there's definite impact marks from the piston hitting the edges of the combustion chamber. I don't know if this head is salvageable either, uh, especially with the cam journal damage. Passenger bank looks good again in the front. And when you get to the rear cylinder, you can see some valve marks. I think this piston is rotating the bore. I don't even know if it's connected to the... Oh look, I can push it down. So it's not really connected to the crank anymore. So yeah, let's flip this over and see how bad it looks. All right. Well, that looks pretty bad. That looks pretty bad. This is pretty rough. I think we know where that piece of plastic came from. It was the windage tray. There is, I don't even know what cylinder this is for. It's either for this cylinder or it's, yeah, it's a unirod. Let's go ahead and get the windage tray and the pickup. Let's check that, see if that's full of crap. Oh yeah. Look at that. There's a bunch of junk in there. That's what you'd expect. So this one probably, it probably just blew up at idle. It's probably grandma's Mustang. Just, it just had a bad batch of oil. I'm being sarcastic, if you can't tell. Yeah, there's some large chunks of, of uh, metal in there. Let's get the pickup off, get the windows tray off, and look again. It definitely looks like the damage is contained to these two cylinders, but man, they are, they are bad. I have not even tried to turn this crank over, which we're gonna try next to start getting all the rods and pistons out, but I gotta show you the damage to the block first. This area is just trashed. There's huge dents and dings. And it, it did break the block in several places. You'll be able to see once we get the, uh, once we get the crank and the rods and pistons out. I mean, look at the counterbalance. It's, it's got the, death beat out of it it's awful and it's still man I don't even know I don't know what I don't know which cylinder this belonged to Heavy, heavy damage. this last piece out. Let's see if we can get that piston out. Uh, let's try for this one first. That's most of a piston. It's more of a piston than the other side. I think the next thing we're gonna do is take the oil pump off and um, maybe we'll take it apart and see if we can see any damage on the inside, if I know how to take it apart. Let's see if that's a nine. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I have finally found a use for the 9mm socket. It turns out they weren't just wasting our money the whole time. I'm, I'm floored. Absolutely floored. Let's get these T30s out. Oh yeah. Some pretty good scoring in here. Let's get this out. Get this out of here. Yeah, this is pretty scored up. I don't know if you can see that in the video. That is pretty well scored. The housing's got some wear on it. All of that signs of metal and debris running through the oil. Here are our rods and pistons. Well, most of them anyway. All everything that came out of the engine, let's put it that way. And as you can see, the rod bearings are chewed up. Every single, every single one of these has damage. Like debris was run through this engine. It's pretty bad. I, I didn't, it didn't spin any bearings, so I think six of the rods and pistons are usable, whether they're worth anything or not. Well, we'll discover that later, but everything's bad. Everything is bad. Here's the really chewed up piston. This is pretty cool. Almost, almost is in two pieces. I mean, sure, there's lots rest of the piston that are missing, and that's a broken rod. You can see the piston hit the cylinder head. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. I've gone ahead and taken the engine off the stand. We're going to pull the blocks the rest of the way apart. I just needed access to uh, the rear main seal cover, which also has the uh, crank position sensor in it. So we're going to go ahead and get that out of the way first, flip the engine over, and start pulling the mains out. Wow, look at that color. That is a ton of metal in that. Well, I don't even know what you call that. It's like metal sludge. And it smells awful. Time to start buzzing some bolts out. Thrust bearing is always a little more challenging. Well, I think what happened here is pretty clear, is run hard with not enough oil in it. Um, you know, it, it wasn't really varnished like it was ill-maintained. It was probably maintained, it just didn't have enough uh, oil in it. And it, this bearing came apart, it sent the material through the entire engine, trashed the cams and the cylinder heads. And then it ultimately chucked a couple rods. I think one, once one lets go, I mean, it's just a it's just a, a machine of destruction at that point. And um, the rest of this looks pretty typical, but yeah, that that crank is trashed. The block is pretty well trashed as well. You can see the gigantic hole at the bottom of this bore, and uh, all the marks from the rod making contact with the inside of the block. Piston material. This side's got a really massive dent here. And the, the block is just all beat in in this area. It's, it's rough. It actually cracked the block around both sides of the piston squirter. It's, it's scrap. I mean, we knew it was going to be scrap as soon as we saw the piston sideways, but this is extra scrap. So that was actually really easy to work on. I was pleasantly surprised with how simple that engine actually is. I know a lot of pushrod guys talk about how complicated dual cam or overhead cam engines are, and uh, man, I, I really don't think it's any harder to take a Coyote apart than a Hemi engine or a, an a LS even. Uh, I will say it is a little bit more difficult to take a Coyote apart than its predecessor, the four valve, uh, four six, 
The only reason I say that is you have to pull the cams out of a Coyote to get the head bolts out and you don't have to do that on a 4 cam. But that's where the pleasantness stops because the catastrophic failure that that engine suffered pretty much wiped out any chance of profit on this engine. I got, I'm hoping this video does well because I don't even know if I'll break even after scrap because that was horrific. And, and it's clear that that engine was abused. I would not judge these engines by what you saw here today just because if you run any engine hard with not enough oil in it, you're gonna see catastrophic results. I, I know some stuff, oh, well, I ran it three quarts low and it was just fine. Well, yeah, you get lucky sometimes, but this guy definitely did not. I'm hoping the next Coyote I do, I do a lot better. And when I talk about the next Coyote, I'm talking about, yep, I got another one. Uh, this is actually a Gen 2 motor out of a 16 Mustang. And this engine is actually has a pretty unethical story behind it. Uh, I, I didn't steal it, but uh, the reason it's bad and the whole situation with that, if I can talk about the details in that video, I certainly will. As far as the next teardown, uh, I got a couple more LS's in. I might do a six liter truck motor. Um, it could be one of the engines I brought in that I talked about after the rotary teardown. I'm not quite sure, but man, I, I cannot tell you how great it feels to get the support from you guys. Uh, the views, the comments, uh, even people calling me out on something I said wrong or something I did that was dumb. Well, I am human. I, I, I admit I make mistakes, but I, I really appreciate the support and I will definitely catch you on the next one.